not tonight. I want to give you something from God's book tonight, so I want you to take your Bible tonight, and uh, I want you to turn to a verse. Uh, I, I think uh, Tim Shanks is the only one, well, I better not say that either. I guess there's some of the others have heard my uh, pre preach this message tonight, but uh, you can't go like that. You just got to give them what God gives you. Amen? And if you heard it, you get two shots. <laughs> And uh, that means that uh, you're going to tee off on me again. Yes, I'm going to. You say, what do you mean? Uh, how many of you play golf? How many of you play golf? Oh, you're missing life. You need to go out and play some golf. <laughs> That's where you take a little tee. It's a little wooden thing about this big. And it has a round spot on the top of it. And you push it in the ground like that. And then you put the ball on it like that. And then you take and you wind up. You relax a little bit, go about like that, and then you whack! And you hear that thing go whack! Boy, that thing just nails that golf ball, and then it goes. Fuh, 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 fuh. <laughs> or it goes. You hear that into the high grass about this high, lost as a golf ball in high grass. <laughs> And you say, what is that? I'm going to tee off on some of you tonight. <laughs> I'm going to tee off on you, and it's going to be you I'm trying to get. <laughs> and you say, preacher, you preach like that? Yes, I do. I preach like that because I want you to go out of the building tonight different. I don't want you to be the same. I want you to change. You say, change? I mean change. Be different. Say Amen. amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray tonight, by the grace of God, that you would please fill me with the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the bottom of my toe, Father, and probably uh, I can't do a thing. No, there's no doubt about it I can't do. There's no, no probably about it. I can't do nothing. And Father, I pray that you would just please fill me, use me tonight, speak through me, and Lord, I pray that you would touch the heart, that they would remember the message, and that they would do something about it, Father, and not be the same, Lord, please. And yesterday night, too, I pray that you would help them to do something about it, Lord, to help not to just ignore it, but take it to heart and do something about it. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake, amen. amen. Now my text tonight is Malachi chapter 2. Take your Bible and turn to the Old Testament and turn to Malachi. Turn to the book of Malachi and turn to Malachi chapter 2. Last book in the Old Testament, if, you, if you're not real sure where it's at, just get the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then get the last book, Malachi chapter 2, and uh, I want to read one verse, verse 7. For the priest lips, that's the Old Testament, Mosaic uh, Testament, that priest in the Old Testament, for the priest lips should, if he's the right kind of priest in the Old Testament, should do what? Keep knowledge. That our Old Testament priest was in the Bible. He was spending time in the book. He was going over it and over it and over it and over it. So he did what? He had it here and he had it here. So it was coming out here. So that Old Testament priest was giving folks the Bible. Say amen. amen. All right. At least he should have. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So the Old Testament saint would go there and they'd listen to that priest and they'd listen to what he said and out of his heart and out through his lips was coming the word of God. Say amen. amen. All right, now it says, And he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the messenger, I want you to take in your Bible, I want you to circle that word, messenger, messenger. And the name of my message tonight is God's messengers. Are you looking for God's messengers? They're all over the world. They're everywhere. But you know what Christians do? They miss God's messengers. They don't get them. They don't pay attention to them. We got here... Recently, in New York City, we got God's messenger was sent. And it come down across, I got up early in the morning, and I went up, and 
I went out and I was going to watch the news. Anybody with me? And I turned on the news and was going to watch the news and looked at there and I thought, man, this is supposed to be the news, but it's some TV program that somebody slipped in the news and they got a computer in with there and they've made this here movie up and this is science fiction and they're dropping two great big huge buildings and an airplane hit one. I said, man, they can do anything with computers nowadays. <laughs> and I'm watching this thing and I thought, man, wild movie. And then a couple more minutes go by and the guy says, and an airplane comes around and it hit the other side. And I say, man, quite a movie. <laughs> And, and all of a sudden, I say, all of a sudden, the guy goes on, and this is the real thing. How many of you saw what I'm talking about? Say amen. amen. You saw that. Is there anybody in this building that didn't see it? I think everybody saw the thing. A half a dozen times. You say, what for? It's the messenger of God. The messenger of God coming to America to give America a message. Now, some folks have got the message. Some folks didn't get the message. Now, you say, Preacher, tell us what you think the message was. I'll tell you exactly. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. And in Luke chapter 13, I want you to see what I believe is happening in New York City with those two buildings in uh, the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers, dropped all the way to the ground, and killed thousands of people, killed I don't know how many people, but killed a whole slug of them. And I believe a whole bunch of them are saved people. I believe upside, up there in those office buildings, I bet you guarantee there was some saved man up there doing his, uh, what he was supposed to be doing. Anybody agree with me? Yeah. Saved man. So I don't say this was uh, some uh, God killing a whole bunch of sinners and putting a bunch of sinners in hell. I don't believe that at all. I believe a whole bunch of them were saved people. So it's not, a, not God's wrath on a bunch of sinners per se. Take your Bible, Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, pick up verse 1. There were present at the, at the season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. See? He's, so he's, he's given an illustration that locally happened right there. So somebody was making a sacrifice, and along come uh, Pilate and killed a bunch of them. Now, verse 2, And Jesus answered and said to them, Suppose ye that the Galileans were sinners above all Galileans, because they suffered such things. Now watch what Jesus says. I tell you, what's that next word? Hey. What does that mean? No. Means exactly right. No, those folks there weren't a bunch of sinners. Wasn't the wrath of God on the whole bunch of sinners. He says, I tell you, nay, no. That ain't what it was. Somebody get up and said, that's God's wrath on a bunch of sinners. You got the thing wrong. You miss God's messenger. All right, now let's read a little bit further. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So what was the messenger God? It was a message to America to repent. And they better repent. If they don't repent, it's time is running out for the United States of America. You say, what is it? Somebody ought to wake up. But you know some most folks, do you know what they say? They just keep right on going just like they're going, say, well, that's a bad thing that happened, bad thing that happened, and right on, keep on, don't change them one lick. They didn't, didn't change one iota. What was wrong? They missed the messenger of God. They missed that messenger. Now, I'm the messenger of God. Don't you walk out the building and be the same. Don't you despise the messenger of God and walk out the building and be the same. It ought to change you. All right. Now look at it again. Verse 4. Uh, or these 18. Now he gives a number, number there. Upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Some tower, particular place there, Jesus is talking about. He was underneath them and the tower fell on them and killed 18 of them. 
All right? Now, uh, uh, now watch it. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? Question mark. He asked a question. You think these folks are a bunch of sinners? Now watch what he says. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So what's he saying? Jesus Christ says, they weren't sinners above anybody else at all. But he says, unless you repent, you're going to perish just like they did. So you know what God did to America? He comes along and says, I want America to repent. Now here it is, went nationwide. Millions of people in America saw what took place. Now you know what a man ought to do if he had wisdom? He ought to say, now, I need to get right with God. I need to go back to church. I need to do something. I need to change something. God, I know God. I've got to do something. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change. If you was a wise man, you would change something in your life. You would listen to the messenger of God. Now, you know what Christians do? They don't look for the messengers of God. They don't look for them. They go through life and there's thousands of messengers. Number one, I want to say this. All of God's messengers will never contradict one single word that's in that book. Now listen to me. Not one single messenger of God. And there's millions of them. They're everywhere. I mean, they're out there on the highway. They're out there. You can find them any place. You can find a messenger of God right in the middle of a computer program. Going on there. All of a sudden, flip, here it is. But you know what people do? They don't pay attention to it. They bypass it. They miss the messenger of God. They're all over. You've got to look for them. You've got to find them and see them and pay attention to them. Now, I want to give you some messengers of God. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Proverbs. Now, here's a messenger of God. And this is aimed at a direct man. And it's a direct messenger and God made this messenger for a particular man, and America is plumb full of these men. And very few, very few of these men that it's aimed at ever get the messenger. And he's there almost every day. Almost there. Every single day, and they miss him. Now, you ready? Proverbs chapter 6. Are you with me? Proverbs chapter 6, and let's pick up 6, verse 6. But, am I in Proverbs 6? No, I'm not in Proverbs 6. I'm in Matthew. <laughs> Boy, rough duty. Proverbs chapter 6, and verse 6, and it says, Go to the what? Ant. An ant. How many ants are there? I don't want to even take a guess. <laughs> but are they here? How many, do you have ants in this area? Lots of them. Lots of them. Go to the ant. Now who's it aimed at? Say it one more time. You, who's that? That's... <laughs> okay, brother. <laughs> okay, you got God's messenger. <laughs> Go for it, go for it, go for it. <laughs> go for it. I'm not going to argue about this. <laughs> you say, what? Go for it. Go for it, man. <laughs> you say, what is it? I mean, if that's the problem, get the lead out of your bitches. <laughs> if that's the problem, you're lazy, 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 lazy. And it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Because if you're lazy, you're too lazy to read that book. And if you're lazy, you're too lazy to pray. If you're too lazy, if you're lazy, you're too go lazy to go on visitation. You got a problem. Ooh, it's quiet now. <laughs> you say, what is it? God put that at Yeah, I'll tell you what you do. Come with me. You got it? Now, you're honest, fella. And very few people are on that are honest. <laughs> Most of them say, it's him, it's him. Yeah, it's him, it's him, it's ain't me. <laughs> yeah, it's you, all right. You're just pure lazy. That's the problem. Lazy. If you wasn't so lazy, you wouldn't have the problem you got. Come on with me. I want you to get God's messenger. Come on over here. Take a look at him. Take a look at him. He's right there. See, there he's crawling in the crack. Crawling in the crack. He's crawling. And then watch him. I'm going to kick him a little bit. Boom. Oh, look at him. Go, man. And he can get up and go. He found, a, he found a, something over there. He's picking it up. 
Man, that thing weighs a ton. He must be ten times his weight. He's picking up and dragging it. Oh, here comes another one to come along. He, both they're dragging it. Man, look at him go. You know what's wrong with you? You won't get God's messengers and you ignore God's messengers and you haven't went out on the sidewalk and looked at God's messengers for months. And that's what you need to do. Your laziness is about to destroy you. How many times have you been fired because of your laziness? You say, hit the road, Jack, you're too lazy. Can't stand a lazy man. If you're going to work with me, bud, you're going to work right beside me and you're going to work as long as I work and as hard as I work. And if you ain't going to work, I'm going to fire you and get you down the road and get rid of you. Because I can't stand you. Can't stand a lazy man. Why? Because his wife is going to suffer. His wife is going to suffer. His children are going to suffer. And that's what's wrong with America. American people are lazy. They miss the messenger of God. He created that end for that purpose. Go to the ant, thy sluggard, and consider her ways, and be wise. Look for God's messengers. They're out there by the millions. You just miss them. Here's one. Here's one. I bet you, I bet you, you know it. God made a messenger for a particular purpose. Well, I can't see it, can't do it. But here it is. It's called a chameleon. He's, he can change blue. A chameleon can turn blue. A chameleon can turn orange. A chameleon can come in church and say, I'm saved! I'm saved! Go out there. And say, ha, ha, I'm your buddy. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. And Ma, I mean, he just changed color just like that. You're a chameleon. Got it? You got that? You say, what's that? You started talking like the unsaved man. You said amen back here with these other Christians. And you had your Bible with these other Christians. And you may be a Christian. I grant you. You may be saved. I grant you. I say amen. In fact, I may meet you in glory. But you're still a chameleon. You know what the chameleon is? You mean there's that guy that goes out there to the bar, to the Mecca, gets drunk, goes up there and tips him up like this, and then dances with that crowd, and then he's with this crowd over here and saying, Amen, preacher, that's a good one. Get him. Got me? Now that's a chameleon. You say, say man, probably, maybe. I wouldn't argue with you. If you say I'm washed in the blood, I'd say, man, you're washed in the blood. But you're still a chameleon. You despise God's messenger. He has them all over, you know that? Go out here on this interstate. How many of you go out in this interstate and drive up and down this interstate? Anybody drives anywhere else? <laughs> Go out to that interstate, out to that interstate, every once in a while, you'll see God's messengers. And it's a great big semi. And that semi has about 12 cars on it that have been smashed down to about that big. Big old semi loaded with about 12 cars. Nice big old juicy Cadillac. It's about that big, about that flat, a Porsche and a Mercedes Benz. No, <laughs> they don't smash them that flat. They repaint them and sell them up to some guy that don't know any better. <laughs> right? But boy, they'll smash your fort in a hurry and they'll smash your Chevy in a hurry and put it up on that pile because God has a messenger going down the interstate and he wants you to see his messenger. Now, you know what the messenger's saying? Do any of you know what the messenger's saying? The messenger's saying, it's all going to burn up in flame. It's all going back to the dumpster. It's all going back to the pile. You know what you and I do? We go out there and wash my car and shine it. Oh, yeah, I got a little spot on it. Oh, don't 
don't touch my car. That's my car and don't you touch it. It's going to the pile. God's messenger went down the highway yesterday. And that's where it's headed. Say amen. amen. One night I was preaching to my church and I said, all oh, this world is going to go up in a ball of flame. How many believe the world is going to go up in a ball of flame someday? Amen. Second, second Peter. And second Peter says, seeing this, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be? That's what it says. I was preaching that one Wednesday night. Had a guy back there. Oh, man, he had a beautiful house. And he had a, had a Corvette, a white Corvette. I like a white Corvette. Woo! Corvette, man. And he looked at me and I said, it's going to go up in the flame. He said, preacher, my house, okay, but not my Corvette. <laughs> Your Corvette too. <laughs> it's going to go up in a ball of flame. God sent a messenger down the road and he wouldn't pay attention to the messenger. you got to pay attention to God's messenger. All right. Now, I want you to get messenger number one. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Numbers and turn to Numbers chapter 22. Messenger number one. I want you to get God's messengers. You need to watch for them. You need to look for them. And you need to pay attention to them when they come your way. The book of Numbers. And uh, Numbers. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I'm doing this for my own benefit. <laughs> Genesis uh, and Numbers chapter 22 and pick up verse 28. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Verse 28 said, And the Lord, and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said to Balaam, What have I done to thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? Now, I'm not going to kind of think about that just a minute. Suppose you went up and says, Roscoe, you're getting a little fat, my boy. You need to go up on the road for a little while. And so you go out in the barn and you get the saddle and you put Roscoe under the saddle. And then you jump on him and say, come on, Roscoe, let's go. You're getting fat, my boy. And then off you go on Roscoe. You head it up over the ridge there. And he goes up into the huckleberries and the blackberries and you get you all cuts up your leg and you say, ah, what are you doing, you dumb donkey? You know, grab his ear and you cut around a little bit and slap him in the head. <laughs> say, straighten up and go on the road right. And he does, and goes another couple hundred yards, and he slams up on the other side, and blam! And he says, what went wrong with you? Nuts or something? And you hit him on top of the head, and all of a sudden, Roscoe opens up his mouth. <laughs> and says, Brother Mudlash, what are you doing to me? <laughs> oh, would you just sit up there and talk back to him? Say, now, brother, I'm telling you, I don't know why I'm doing it. You wouldn't do that, would you? Yeah, I'll tell you what he'd do. He'd get down on his knees and he'd say, Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, I got to messenger. Oh, what do you want me to do? Wouldn't he? Not Balaam. Not Balaam. He starts talking back to the donkey. Ha! I can't believe this guy. You're talking to her. What are you talking to her for? That's what he does. That's what he does. Talks right back for him to carry on a soldier's conversation. Oh man, he misses the messenger of God. He missed it. Take your Bible and turn to Second uh, Peter. Turn to Second Peter, and he misses the messenger of God. Turn to Second Peter chapter two and look at verse sixteen. Second Peter chapter two. Pick up verse sixteen. He missed the messenger of God. Second Peter, now I need to get this right. Second Peter chapter 2 and in verse 16. Are you with me? It says, but, but was, was rebuked, take your pen and underline it, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb, uh, the dumb ass spake with a man's voice, forbidden the madness of the prophet. 
Now, what, underline that word rebuked. Rebuked. Then the messenger of God was there for a purpose. And the purpose was to rebuke that guy. And he misses the rebuke. The test of your character is how do you take rebuke? When the messenger of God comes down through you and rebukes you, do you take it? Or do you go right back home and say, well, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... And then continue on the same old road. You missed the messenger of God. You missed the rebuke. If I grab you tonight and shake you like that and say, straighten up, and you say, yes, preacher, I got it, I got the message, I got it, then you got the rebuke. The test is how do you take rebuke? If you get mad and justify yourself and say, I ain't going to change, you didn't take rebuke right. Do you hear me? You hear me? You say, what am I going to do, preacher? Take the rebuke. Don't despise the messenger. Take the rebuke. Say, God, I got it. I'll do some melody. Yes, I will, God. I will, I will, I will. He rebuked him. What did he rebuke him for? Now look at verse 15, right in front of it. Which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam. The way of Balaam. Then he was rebuked for his way. He was up, Now take your pen, underline it. He was rebuked for his way. Now what's a way? My Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What is the way? Jesus said, I am the way. The way to what? The way to heaven. So what's he rebuking him for? He's rebuking him about that way to get to heaven. Now you was rebuked. Where's this young man that got saved this morning? Or your Sunday morning? You was rebuked for your way. What'd you do? You said, I, I'm rebuked. I'm going to change that way. I want to get the real salvation. I want the, I want the right way. So when that preacher preached on it, and you know what some men could have said? Oh, criticize my religion. My religion is as good as his now. I'm a good man. I'm a religious man. I'm a good man. I, I'm just good as any. My religion is as good as yours. I mean, what? Tell me my religion ain't good enough to save me. You took the rebuke. You see it? How many say it? Say amen. amen. He said, yes, sir. Down that aisle he came. Well, he didn't come down the aisle. He went right through the chair. <laughs> Oh, a blessing, man, a blessing, a blessing. He took the rebuke. There are many a man didn't take the rebuke. He just says, Mom, I'm not going to change. You, you mean to tell me you want me to get saved? I can't do that. I'd have to admit I'm a sinner. I can't do that. I mean, oh, I'm, I'm not wrong. And then he don't take the rebuke. He was rebuked for his way. He would now take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter uh, 2 and look at verse 14. Balaam was rebuked by that donkey and he was rebuked for what? Revelation chapter 2 verse 14 says, But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of what? Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. So he was rebuked for his what? Doctrine. His doctrine. Do you know what you guys, you know what you folks get around here? You get doctrine. You get doctrine, 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 doctrine. You know what's out there? Doctrine. But that ain't the same kind of doctrine you find in here. And so when you come in here and this preacher gets up there and gives you doctrine, don't you stiffen up and go, man, never heard that before. <laughs> never heard that before. Where did he get that? <laughs> that sounds weird. Hey, pay attention to the messenger of God and take the rebuke and change your doctrine to match that book right there. That book! You say a rebuke? A rebuke! And many a man won't take that. He won't change for loving the money. Sit there and say, Amen. Well, that's what the preacher believes, but it ain't going to change me none. Well, if he give you that book, you ought to change your belief to match that book, and don't you change that book to match your belief. 
Did you hear what I said? Change your belief to match that book. All right, take your Bible and turn to uh, Jude verse 1. Look at verse 11. Jude verse 1 verse 11. He was also rebuked for something else. Woe unto them. Jude verse 1 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They have run greedily after the heir of Balaam. So Balaam was rebuked for his greed. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, get, 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 get. I'm never satisfied. He was a pegamist. He was, he could have been God's man. But he said, I got to have this and this and this and this, and I got to get more, man. If I go up there, and I just might be, God will curse him, and I'll get rich. He had that money sign between his eyes. But he missed a messenger of God and he was rebuked and didn't get the messenger of God. Why? Because he wasn't looking for him. Got to look for the messenger of God. Look for him, find him. They're all over. They're all over. You can find them in high school. You can find them everywhere you go. But you don't recognize them because you're not looking for them. Now, again, take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, why don't you look at verse 4. Here's another messenger of God, and you want to get it. Turn to 1 Kings. And in 1 Kings chapter 17, I want you to look at verse 1. Let's begin in verse 1. 1 Kings 17, 1. Now, Elijah the Tishbabite, what a great man. Now, brother, we was talking about uh, men we like in the Old Testament. <laughs> We were talking about today at noon, we were talking about men that we love and some guys that we just kind of go for. <laughs> and kind of men that just kind of excite us and encourage us. I get excited by Elijah the Tishbabite. Elijah the Tishbabite. You say, Elijah the Tishbabite. He was a man, brother. Now, you can, you can get the football hero if you want. That's all right. <laughs> but I suggest you get one from the Bible. He's much better. <laughs> You say, uh, show me one. That Bible's plumb full of heroes. Get your hero. We all got to have heroes. You know that? Brother Modulus, you're a little bit my hero. Oh my. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit my hero. You didn't quit when you could have quit. That's a hero. Amen. And a hero wants to, some people want to quit. America is full of quitters. Don't quit. Now, I, I, I interrupted myself. <laughs> 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishbite, who is inhabited of Gilead, and to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not deep dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him again, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide. Take and circle that word, hide. Hide. You say, what is he doing? He's running and hiding. You know why he's running and hiding? Because you don't have to fight every battle. Don't fight every battle you get in. You don't have to fight every battle. Sometimes you just got to run and hide. You don't have to fight everything that comes your way. So because I got to fight every battle. No, you don't. Some of them you run and hide. He said run and hide. That's God telling that guy to hide. Telling Elijah the Tishbavite to hide. Yeah. To run and hide. Now watch what happens to him. Watch what happens to him. Now, watch in verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt uh, drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went. He didn't waste any time. He didn't argue with God. He went. And did according to the word of the Lord. For he was dwelt in the brook of Chinnereth, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. You say, what are the messengers of God? Here's Elijah, the Tishbite, and he's out there. And he's getting tired. He gets out there and he says, No, Lord, I'm out here. And I'm just as tired as I can be. And I'm as hungry as I can be. I can eat a horse. God, I could eat a horse. You, you give me a horse, I could eat the thing, man. I am just, <laughs> I really could, Lord. And what do you what do you think about Lord? You just don't even care that I'm this hungry. And the Lord says, Elijah, look up. He says, Look up. Yeah, look up. 
looks over there, way off in the distance, he sees some ravens. And then the Lord says, keep looking at them. Down across come them ravens. They're flying there, about five or six of them going down through there like that, just going down through there like that. And they make up there and make a big curve, make a turn. And they make a turn, come down through here like this and come across Elijah. And he looks up and there's something in their mouth. And it comes down here and comes down like a dive bomber and goes, toom, 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 toom. And he goes, oh, yes, 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 bread, bread, bread. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he eats it. Then at night, he says, no, Lord, have you forgot me? Man, Lord, you, I, don't, I don't think you love me, Lord. <laughs> you forgot, man, I'm just as hungry. I ain't ate nothing all day. Lord, what are you doing? Can't figure you out sometimes. He says, look up, stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yes, I see him. Here it comes. What are they, Lord? You know, look a little bit long. Keep your eye on them. They're coming flopping down through here. Well, I, I don't know what those things are. Down there, black and ravens coming down through there. And they come around here and make a circle and come right down across you like that. And blam, 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 down they go. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, yes, yes. Hey, he gets it. He just, I mean, he just shovels it down. Now, those are God's messengers. What are the messengers saying? Write it down. Take your pen, write it down. God will provide. Amen. Now, take your pen, write it down. God will provide. Are you looking for God's messengers? Are you looking for them? You think God won't provide? He will provide. He will provide. You've got to look for His messengers. Look for them. Take your Bible and turn to Philippians. And turn to Philippians chapter 4 and look at verse 19. My Bible says God will provide. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. How many of you know Philippians 4, 19? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, 13 ain't bad, but it should be a whole lot better. Amen. Anybody quote me? How many of you can quote me Philippians 4, 13? I mean, 4, 19. You can quote it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I might ask you. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, folks, you got to get Philippians 4.19. you got to get it, and you got to get it like it's on, on your hand, like you wrote it on your hand. Philippians 4.19, you got to know it. Now, you with me? My, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You mean to tell me God will supply all your need? Now take your pen and write in the margin of your Bible, it, it, God, leave the how up to God. Leave the how up to God. Now he'll take care of the how. He will. We want to say, now God, how are you going to take care of me? Oh God, how are you going to take care of me? I got a bill and a bill and I'm just upside down. And oh God, they're going to take my car because the car is not paid for in the house. Oh God, what am I going to do? Leave the how up to God. Claim the verse. Claim the verse. Look for God's ravens. Look for God's ravens. God will provide. He'll take care of you. Claim the promise. You know what it's like? I was preaching this at Brother... Uh, I was preaching this at your church. And I was at the time, I was, you know, I was having a little hard time financially. <laughs> I can't have it all the time. <laughs> And, uh, and somebody come up to me and said, Preacher, my daddy, it was a little girl, said, my daddy said to give this to you. And she stuck something in my hand. Stuck something in my hand right there. And you know, I could tell it was money. <laughs> and you know, you know, you take it and you, you say, Thank you, honey. Tell your daddy I said thank you. And I stuck it in my pocket. And then a couple minutes went by and I stuck my hand in my pocket and I went, Oh, man, wonder if it's ten bucks. <laughs> Big ten. Maybe it's a twenty. <laughs> Maybe it's a twenty. I snuck back over out of the way so nobody could see me. 
and I reached in my pocket and I pulled it out. It was a hundred dollar bill. Woo! A big hundred yet! Will God provide? Will He provide? He will provide. Look for God's ravens. Look for them, Christian. Look for them. You said it was a little girl. Yeah, it was a little girl. Little girl. I see God's ravens quite often. I see God's ravens quite often. Why? Because I'm looking for them. Are you looking for them? Go look for them. Here it is. Take your Bible again and turn to Luke chapter 16. Here's another one of God's messengers. Turn to the Gospel of Luke and turn to Luke chapter 16 and see another one of God's messengers. Are you looking for God's messengers, Christian? Are you looking for them? You bypassing them or are you just letting them slide? Uh, Luke chapter 16. And Luke chapter 16 verse 19 says, And there was a certain rich man which was clothed with purple and fine linen and feared substantially every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, and he laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And come to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angel to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died. And where did the rich man go? Verse 23. Where did the rich man go? And in hell he lifted up his eyes. So here's the rich man, and here's Lazarus. Rich man lives, he ends up in hell burning forever. Say amen. amen. Thank God this young man didn't go to hell. He's going to heaven now. Change roads. Amen. Change roads. Rich man went to hell. Well, here's Lazarus outside of the rich man's house. And old Lazarus is out there and he got a couple of gospel tracts in his pocket. And he says, uh, hey, hey, will you read one of these here? <laughs> Gives him a tract. <laughs> And he's there laying there and says, Moreover, it said he, he desired the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Didn't say he had the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table, did it? Said he desired to have the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Didn't say he got them, but he might have got them. Because if he, if he desired them, he might have got them once in a while. So he might have got them there once in a while. So he desired to have them. And he gets them and he says, Oh, Lord, I, I got a few crumbs today. But Lord, Lord... Uh, uh, I'm just plumb full of sores. I'm just plumb full of sores. And oh God, I mean to tell you, these sores are killing me. And oh God, there's that rich man. There's that rich man. I mean, he's dressed up. He's eating high on a hog and low on the chicken. And God, you know, you love him, but you don't love me. Got it? Got it? Wouldn't you say something like that if you see that rich man walk down there with a rope with his tie and coat on? And I mean, he's got... He, I mean, you could tell that guy had the money and he had the clothes and he had everything this world could provide. And there, there's old Lazarus. Lazarus went to glory. Rich man went to hell. So Lazarus said, Oh God, God, you don't love me. You don't, you don't love me. Oh God, you don't love me. Look at him. Look at me. You got me? And then the Lord says, I love you, Lazarus. Well, well, God, prove it. Prove, prove to me you love me. You say you love me, prove it to me. Okay, okay. The Lord says, uh, uh, there's a black old mutt. I got a job for you. And there's another old dog there. And says, come on, I got a job for you too. And get another one. I got a job for you, bud. Well, come on now. Let's go. Get up there. Let's go. And gets him about five or six of them. And says, come on. And Lazarus, I want you to pay good attention now because I got my messengers coming by your place. And them, them dogs run in there like that. And they run in like that. And them dogs start licking old Lazarus. And licking him 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 and licking him. And old Lazarus says, oh, Oh, boy, Lord, that feels good. <laughs> oh, man, does that feel good. Woo! Oh, Lord, now I know you love me. You know what you do? Uh, that, you say, what messenger was that? That is a messenger, write it down, God cares for you. They can write it down. God cares for you. Lazarus didn't think that God cares. And he does care. You know what you got to do? You got to look for the moreover dogs. You got to look for the moreover dogs. They're there. Look for them. Look for them.
look for them. They're there. God does love you. If you look for them all over dogs, you'll see and find out God does love you. Don't you think God don't love you? That's a terrible thing to think. But sometimes we think it. We love it. Hey man, it ain't over yet. Don't you look now. You look at the end. I'm going to step into glory with Jesus into a perfect body with sinless and man will it be a time. But that time ain't now. Now you've got to look for the mover dogs and realize that God loves you. Again, take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 22 and look at verse 60. Turn to the book of Luke. And Luke, turn to Luke chapter uh, 22 and pick up verse 60. Are you there? I hope, you, I hope you're close to it. Luke chapter 22. And in Luke chapter 22, verse uh, 60... And it says, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how that he said to him, Before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me thrice. So here's Peter. And then it says, And Peter went out and wept bitterly. So here's Peter beside the fire. Peter's warming himself there beside the fire. And he, he just got through cussing. Peter, the disciple of Jesus, been with Jesus for three and a half years. And he's sitting there and he just got through swearing like a sailor could swear. He got, boy, he turned the, red, the air red. And he said, blankety blank, 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 blank. Didn't he? How many know that, G, that Peter swore? But think about it a minute. Here's the man that was one of his twelve disciples, that was his dear friend, that saw Jesus... Heal Lazarus and heal the sick man and, and heal the leper and raise people from the dead. Man, what a sight to be with Jesus for three and a half years and watch him do all the stuff Jesus did. Boy, if I could have been there. Come on with me. You with me? And here's old Peter. Got his hands on like that. He's cussing and swore and says, I don't know him. I don't know him. And about that time, it said he turned, verse 60, and the Lord turned and looked on Peter. The Lord's coming across there and he's been in this hall and they've taken and they spit in his face, they spit in his face and they hit him and they put a crown of thorns on him and they mocked him and they pulled his beard out and he's walking across the walkway. And as he walks across the walkway with the soldiers, he turns and looks at Peter. What a look. What kind of face was that that Jesus looked at Peter at? What a face. Was he mad? How many think it was a mad look? How many think it was a uh, wrathful look? How many think it was a look like, Oh, Peter, Peter, Peter. What have you done now? And Peter looks at him. And when he looks at him, off over here in the corner, off over here in the corner, there goes off a rooster. That rooster is the messenger of God. That rooster crows. Off he goes! And then out there he hears that crow, looks and sees the eyes of the Savior, sees his face, and then he hears that and he gets the message. What was the message? The message was Peter, repent. Peter, repent. My Bible says, and Peter went out and wept bitterly. He repented and got right with God. But he got the messenger. Do you know what the messenger is? Sometimes God will say to you, repent. 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 Saved man and lost man are told to repent. You say, I'm a saved man. Do I have to repent? Yeah, you've got plenty to repent of. A, wo- a man, I bet there's a man in this building got something to repent of. I bet there's a woman in this building that needs something to repent of. You going to listen to the messenger of God? Or are you going to get up and walk out the door and say, me repent? Yeah, you repent. You say, what is that? That means stop it. That means quit. That means change. That means make a difference. Don't continue on the same rotten road. Got it? One more messenger. 
Take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 12 and look at verse 23. One more messenger. Acts chapter 12, verse 23. And in Acts chapter 12, pick up verse 23 and it says, now watch it, let's pick up verse 21. And upon a seat, Acts chapter 12, verse 21, and upon a, uh, a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, set upon his throne, and made an, uh, an oration, that's a great speech, unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is a voice of a God and not of a man. So he gets up and gives a speech in his clothes, and everybody says, Man is a God! Isn't that a terrible thing? Terrible thing. Now watch what happens. Verse uh, 23. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten with worms, and gave up the ghost. Ain't that something? Here he is sitting on the throne, and all of a sudden he gives a great big speech. And the whole audience says, it's the voice of a God. And he goes, ah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Boy, I give him a good one, man. I really laid it out there yesterday. <laughs> Boy, I did it tonight. And about that time, the Lord says, is that right? And the Bible says he was eaten with worms. Now, I can't imagine it. I don't know how it happened. But it was, must have been a gory sight. Eaten with worms. Somebody said it was on the inside. I don't care if it was on the inside or the outside, but it's terrible. <laughs> the messenger of the worms. What is the messenger of the worms? Make sure you give God the glory. Amen. Don't take all or any, 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 any of the glory for yourself. You didn't do nothing. Don't you preachers say, I, any time. <laughs> say, He did it. He did it. Jesus did it. Lord Jesus did it all. Make sure you get the messenger. The worms ate him. God wants the glory for himself. No Christian says, I did this, I did that. You didn't save yourself. God saved you. You just got his mercy. That's all you did. You said, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. Please save me. And he saved you just like that. Everybody in this building got saved that way. You don't have nothing to do with your salvation. All you did was take a gift. He did it all. Make sure you give him the glory. All right, let's stand tonight. Take your, uh, take your hymn book and turn to hymn number... Where's my song leader? Page 59, Amazing Grace. You folks know it. Now I want you to...